Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Brackman Sampler Sew Along hosted by me. <laughs> I'm so glad you are all once again joining me on a quilt along journey. And this one, I think, will be a fun one given that we won't know what the block is. Well, I will, but you won't. What the block is until the start of each video. So, f going forward from here, you'll see at the start of the video the wheel of fortune spinning, telling us which block that we are going to be making. I'll then give you the brief history of that block using the Brackman ID number from the book Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilts. And then the video will continue. And in the video, I'll try and show you two unique ways to make each block. Each week, the videos will be essential for the quilt along as the pattern for lack of a better term, will only give you the cutting instructions and the fabric requirements that you need for that week's block. If, as we go along, people would prefer for me to write out the whole pattern, I can do that, but they may not always be available when the video is released. Alrighty, without much further ado, grab a beverage, grab a friend, come with me, and let's begin. Okay, so block number one, let's spin the wheel. What will it be? Let's wait and see. Okay, block 1633 is our first block. So here is our block 1633. Now that is the Brackman ID number. So that's just the number that Barbara assigned the block. And it was known when it was published in the KC Star as the Silent Star and Star X by Grandma Dexter. Now for the KC Star, that was in 1940 and it appeared in three periodicals from 1928 to 1960. Grandma Dexter, that was when it was named the Star X, it appeared in a series of booklets published in the early 1930s. Let's get on to making it. As discussed in the live last week, I am using a range called Leaf, which was put out by Dale Allen Rose, also known as the Quilting Cowboy for Wyndham Fabrics. I've chosen to do a week number one's block in this lovely red bubble which is probably one of my favorite fabrics from this fabric line. Coming up, you'll see me do all of the cutting out that we need for this block from these two fat quarters. The background fabric, of course, won't be fat quarters, but it just was easier for me to manage on my mat here. So from our background, we need two five inch squares and these will be used to make our half square triangles. We then need three five and a half inch squares and these are used to make our quarter square triangles. From the print fabric, we need to cut the same. We're going to begin today by making the half square triangles that we need and we need a total of four. So we're going to grab our B and D fabrics and we're going to take our B fabric and draw a diagonal line in one direction only corner to corner on the back of all of our B squares which is just two. Saying all makes it seem like there's hundreds. Anyway, we'll draw our diagonal line on the back of these. We'll then put this right side together with our D fabric squares, take those over to our machine and stitch a quarter of an inch on each side of our drawn line. We 
With our stitching now done, we'll just take those to the pressing mat and give them a quick press just to set those stitches into the fabric before cutting them in half along our drawn line. We'll then return to our pressing mat and press all of these towards the darker of the two fabrics. Be careful not to stretch that seam as it is on the bias. Now that we have those pressed, it is time to trim these down. And as you can see, I do trim mine half square triangles down two at a time. I just find this is quicker and easier, but this same method works for you to do it one at a time. So I just bring in my six and a half inch square ruler. I just make sure whichever ruler you're using has that 45 degree line on it. Line up that 45 degree line on your stitching line, making sure that you have enough fabric outside the trim down measurement, which in this instance is four and a half inches. You need to have that excess on all four sides at first before trimming the first two sides. We're then going to line up that four and a half inch measurement that I stated before on those freshly cut sides making sure we once again have our 45 degree line there along our stitching line before we trim the final two sides and our half square triangles are trimmed to perfection when trimming your half square triangles down two at a time as you see me doing here you do need to first ensure that that seam in the middle is very snugly nested so that you are trimming them to the exact size in both instances. We now need to make our quarter square triangles or hourglass unit or bow tie unit or whatever you want to call it, but we need to make it. <laughs> and to start, we're going to take one of our A squares and I'm going to show you one method of making these first and then we'll cover an alternate method of making them. So with our A square and our C square here we start exactly the same as half square triangles by drawing our diagonal line from corner to corner matching that right sides together taking it to the machine stitching a quarter of an inch on each side of that drawn line pressing it to set the seams and then cutting that in half on the drawn line and then pressing to the dark side and then we stop. We don't trim these down at this stage because we'll do all of the trimming at the end. So to move on to the next step, we need to make sure that we nest these nice and tidy with our background and feature fabric on opposite sides. I'll lift it up in a moment and you can see that. Then what we need to do is once we've made sure that that is very snugly nested in the middle there, we need to draw another diagonal line from corner to corner, which runs perpendicular to the stitching line. So if you place it on the mat the way you see me doing that here, we can then line up one of the markings on our ruler to make sure that we're going right along that stitching line and then drawing our diagonal line from corner to corner thusly. We'll then take this to the machine and we need to stitch a quarter of an inch on each side of this drawn line. With our stitching now done, just as when we do our half square triangles, I'm going to press that first to settle those stitches down into the fabric before cutting it in half along our drawn line once again. And you'll see that our quarter square triangle blocks will magically appear. And then we'll just take these back to the pressing mat and press those in whichever direction you choose. You can also spin these seams if, if that's what you feel like, but in my case, I'm just pressing to one side. We'll then get ready to trim these down.
Trimming down these quarter square triangle units is very different to doing our half square triangles and I'll zoom in here for you to see. We want a finished measurement of four and a half, well an unfinished measurement, sorry, of four and a half inches. So we need to locate that two and a quarter inch mark on our ruler. We'll place that two and a quarter inch mark at the intersection of all four of our triangles, making sure that our 45 degree line or our diagonal line on our ruler is along one of those seams. You then need to double check that at the other two points that I just indicated that the four and a half inch mark is dissecting right on that seam allowance, giving you a sharp corner before trimming away the first two sides. Rotate the block around, line up all of those things again, including now the four and a half inches on the outside of the block before trimming away the final two sides. This way your block is perfectly trimmed and perfectly centered. As indicated before, I am going to show you an alternate method that is quite often used for constructing these quarter square triangle blocks. And that is to grab your two fabrics, so a background and your feature fabric. And then what you do is you cut these into the quarter square triangles before doing any sewing and then sew them together in the correct manner uh, so that you get the right placement and it's just an alternate method that you can use. Now, for me personally, when I can, I prefer to use the first method I showed you because once you cut these squares twice on the diagonal as you're just seeing me do now, every single edge that's on the peak of your triangles is a bias edge. So you have to take particular care when sewing them together again to not stretch those edges. The quarter square triangles are designed for once they're sewn in that that long edge is on the straight of grain which will become the outside of your block but while sewing them together you do have bias edges on the other two sides of your triangle. So this is an alternate method and is quite often used if you need to mix them up at random because the two at a time method that I showed you before will only give you two quarter square triangle blocks that are identical so if you're using lots of different scrap fabrics for your quarter square triangles this would be the method that you would use so as you can see we did cut the block twice on the diagonal twice and now we're going to just take this to the machine and sew these together again in pairs like this but i'm going to flip that around and start at the blunt side so that we don't risk getting our points sucked down into the bed of our machine. We'll now just clip these apart and very gently press towards the darker of the two fabrics before lining them back up again with our background and feature fabrics on opposite sides and stitching our final seam and then pressing once again in any direction we choose. We'll then trim those down in exactly the same way as we did before. We now have four quarter square triangle units, but we need five. So I'm going to use the second method and just cut half of the square and put the larger section aside for a later project and just create one more quarter square triangle block from the other half. And I'll meet you back when that's done for the final block construction. All 
Alrighty, we have all nine of our units made to make up our nine patch block. And as that's the chapter of the book that we're coming from, equal nine patch, we will have an equal sized patch for each of our nine patches. Patch, 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 patch. Let's just keep saying that over and over. So we should have our four half square triangles that we created way back in the beginning, so 14 minutes ago, and all of our quarter square triangle units that we just created now. And that is five, giving us our nine blocks or units to make up our nine patch block. We're going to refer back to our pattern and the little inset there in the top left hand corner to make sure that we have the orientation of our quarter square triangles correct. Basically you will put the red or your feature fabric towards the white in all instances with those half square triangles in the corner with the print fabric facing out towards those corners and then the center one goes exactly the same orientation as the top and bottom row. As this is a nine patch, we will put this together with normal nine patch construction, which sees us do all of our vertical seams, creating our three rows. We'll press the top row out towards those corners, the middle row in towards the center square, the bottom row out towards the corners. That'll allow when we come to do our final two horizontal seams, joining our three rows together, our intersections will nest nicely. You will find with the quarter square triangle units that in some instances you may get a little bit bulky so you'll see that I come in with my little snips and I snip into but not past the stitching of the seam allowance and I finagle that in the direction that I want it to go to reduce that bulk. Once we've done our final two horizontal seams we will press... Actually, I'll tell you when we get there. See you soon. Alrighty, so I decided to spin these intersections as they can get quite bulky and I was just looking at the fact that I caught a little bit of the fabric there. So what we're going to do is pick out the few stitches that are on the outside of our seam allowance and then spin these seams all in the same direction. So in this case we're going counterclockwise just to open up that seam and flatten it down. Now I am putting a clip here but I didn't really need to because it is two points coming together. So it didn't matter if it went one way or the other. And then I'm just going to repeat that same process at this other intersection. But as you can see, I was mostly able to just pull that apart. And you just use your little friend Jack there just to take out anything that's preventing that seam from opening up. And in this case, on this side, all of our seam allowances are going in a clockwise direction. Once we've opened those up, we can set those with a final press before putting on the last remaining row and repeating that process. And this block is done. 
but stay tuned as I have an alternate method of constructing the entire block to share with you. Okay, I don't know if any of you have seen the From Marty Michelle templates before, but she has two template sets, A and B. A is for three inch finished squares and B is for four inch finished squares. Now, the reason that she has these two sizes is because most blocks overall, as ours is today, we're making a 12 inch block and it's made from nine four inch finished units. So what we have here is the big four inch square we have the half square triangle for that square. We have a square on point that will give us a four and a half inch unfinished unit, but we need to bring in the half square triangle from down here, the 13, for our four corners. While we're on it, that 13, number 13 piece will also give you two and a half inch unfinished half square triangle units, and it goes with the number 12, which is a two and a half inch square. Number 11 that I'm just about to pick up is the quarter square triangle for your four and a half or four inch finished unit. Four of those will give you that four and a half inches. As I touched on briefly before, number 12 is half the size of the four inch finish. So this will give you a two inch finished or a two and a half inch square. And as I said, we have the 13, which is the half square triangle for that piece number 12. And we have 14, which is the quarter square triangle for that smaller unit as well. So these are quite um, handy to have around and I do use them from time to time and I use these because I don't have any AccuQuilt dies that are these sizes. I mean I do have the two and a half inch square multi die and I do have the two and a half inch half square triangle die but sometimes I just pull these out and use those instead. So for our purposes today and making this block, we just need to use pieces nine and 11. And I'll just speed through showing you how we use these to cut out. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory, laying out the block and then piecing it together. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Okay, folks, that was a long one for our first block for this week, but hopefully you got something out of me showing you the Marty Michelle templates. And I'm going to do a little bit more investigation there as I know that Marty Michelle said that she's retiring soon, but I don't know what that means for the ongoing business of her templates. So if you haven't already done so, like the video, share it with a friend. They need to see me as well, don't you think? Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And when you subscribe, make sure you tickle that little bell icon to be notified of all my future releases so that you don't miss a thing. Bye for now.